WBLS New York, number one. Were you here? Oh, you won. I owe you one. All happening now on WBLS, America's best. 107.5 FM. I'm Frankie Crocker. You know who you are. I trust My mother, there's too many of you to cry. Brother, 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 there's far too many of you dying. You know we've got to find a way to bring some loving here today. Yeah. Nothing about being a 16 year old from Chicago who that prepared you for New York City. I thought I was a big city girl until I got to New York. <laughs> And uh, and then I found that Chicago was really just a big Iowa town that had mushroomed in <laughs> Illinois, but it was nothing <laughs> compared to New York. And my fascination with New York was both a boon and a bane. I spent, I think I spent more time in the city than on campus. I just explored. I mean, there was just nothing about the city that I didn't find fascinating from, you know, I, I learned walking down the street on 125th Street, then when a black man speaks to you, you 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 respond, you say good morning or good afternoon. We didn't do that in Chicago, you know. So I got read from Genesis to Revelation between Lennox and and uh, Fifth Avenue one day because I didn't speak to a brother. That only had to happen to me once. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was it was really the perfect place for me. I didn't realize until after college what. Um, an enormous impact going to college at a place where the professors wanted to teach smart women. I didn't realize the impact of that mm -hmm. until it was over, you know, and I talked to peers who had gone to co-ed institutions and had never been called on in class, no matter how many times they raised their hands and, and so forth. So for all of the unwelcoming aspects of Barnard, the the most important, I think, aspect for me was that the people there were there because they wanted to teach smart women and there, and nobody asked us to dim our wattage or lower our voices because the light was too blinding or the sound was too deafening. Whenever we would go to Sylvia's, just walking down the street, down to 125th Street, I used to wonder, what is on me? Because the brothers would say, oh, so y'all must go to college. college. <laughs> and I remember going, excuse That's me, right. what? That's right. You know, oh, so they, they, I, didn't, yeah. you know, I didn't know what was creating that response from the brothers in Harlem. But I was like, what do, do I have something on me that says I go to college? Yeah. <laughs>
Bruce Foley was saying that, you know, humanities, contemporary civilization didn't seem particularly relevant to me. They're fundamentally different courses now than they were, you know, back then. If you look at the books that they now read. But the other educational component was just hanging out with you all. Yeah. You know, like I said, yeah. interacting with people from different parts of the country, different experiences, different political um, views. That was as much uh, the Columbia experience for me as anything. And it's really the reason why I have an enduring love for the place. You know, the building will always be there, whatever, but it is my memories of, of you all, interactions with you all, the crazy things that we did with one another. Rick Asaf and his golden chariot. I mean, we, all that stuff <laughs> was stuff that, that, you know, that really, it really mattered to me then and, you know, binds me to the place um, even now. But that, that duality of education is something that I think was something that, uh, that I really loved about, uh, about my experience. Wow. Wow. New York, just like I pictured it. God's sake. Everything. Hey, hey, brother. Hey, come here, Slick. Huh? Hey, you look, you look dip, man. Hey, you wanna make yourself five bucks, man? Yeah, brother. Hey, look here, run this fucking street for me right quick, okay? Run this fucking street for me. What? Huh? I don't know. Hey, 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 what? I'm just going across the street. Take your mouth. Oh, no. What'd I do? Turn around, turn around. Put your hands behind your back. Let's go, let's go. The jury of your peers having found you guilty. Ten years. What? Come on, come on, get in that cell, nigga. God, no.
wasn't monolithic. I mean, you had people who went there for, uh, you know, like when my, my class entered it, everybody wanted to be pre-med or pre-law. Almost everybody <laughs> did. Everybody. You know? Right. And that was different. That's it was four thing. years after 68. And so you still had Columbia because it's activism, the 68 Columbia, et cetera. But you had the, the, the school just universally recruiting people who were more, and, and around the country, more people were, were thinking about their future, what was going on. The Vietnam War was ending when we were there. We weren't worried about the draft as yeah. such. I mean, right. people, our class was the last class that we had to worry about the numbers we received. And, and, and so therefore it was sort of like, you didn't, I mean, it's different when you want to go to graduate school or Vietnam, that, when that was a sort of, <laughs> sort of choice, choice that right. was a different choice that you had.